Well, hello again. Welcome back to Sim UK. Today, as promised, I will be giving you my full and in-depth review for Pure Farming 2018. My original first look review, which was out on release day, received a lot of attention and evoked mixed feelings across YouTube. I personally feel like it's made a lot of positive changes, so uh, I'm not in any way concerned about the backlash that has also occurred around that video. Those of you who did not appreciate that first look review complained that in your opinion, I hadn't spent enough time in game to be able to fully or fairly review it. Well, having now spent 14 plus hours in game, I can give you a more concise and in-depth review. Before I begin this review, I do want to read a comment from the developers about their future intent for Pure Farming 2018. I asked them whether or not they ever intended to create a fully hardcore simulator, and this was their response. On a more fundamental point, it's always been our goal to strike a balance between simulation and accessibility. Our modes are a good illustration of that. There's the sandbox for experienced players who know what they're doing, and my first farm for newcomers who want to learn. That balance is everywhere in the game. It places you perhaps you wouldn't notice. Unfolding a plough. Do we make those animations one-to-one -one depictions of real life, i.e. slower than you'd think? Or do we make them almost instant, so that it doesn't frustrate more casual players? Will we go in more of a hardcore sim direction in the future? It will depend on what players ask us for. We plan to continue down this feedback driven path and we think that criticism is usually the most useful form of feedback. Well then, I must be one of their favourite people. <laughs> That's all I can say because I've given a lot of criticism uh, for this game and not because it's a bad game but because it isn't the game that I was hoping it would be. I do understand and I do appreciate that there's a good example there about the plough and do they make it a one-to-one -one depiction of real life i.e. a very slow process and no obviously that isn't necessary but there are things that shouldn't be in a game that's a simulator very simple things for example automatic braking on a vehicle that's just that completely detaches you from the game you don't have to be conscious of what you're doing you can just switch off hold the button down leave it anywhere it doesn't matter nothing becomes important anymore and that's how i feel about this game i feel completely disconnected when i'm playing it i just kind of uh just switch off and not even in a good way i just i get bored and it's not fun and there's there's no involvement there for me that's my issue but let's move on then I'll give a quick review for my fellow hardcore sim fans, okay? I would recommend that you do not buy this game, at least yet. And in fact, I think it's fair to say that this game will never likely come close to even scratching that itch for a hardcore simulator. So maybe just check in again next year or something. The problem I feel with starting so low and following the feedback is that the hardcore players like me will leave and probably not return before anything else can be realised. Now I understand the reasoning for aiming at the middle ground, but all that happens is that you end up splitting even more people because it's neither one or the other. In my experience, it's always better to decide what you want and build that, rather than try and be everything to everyone. But that's just my opinion. So, Pure Farming 2018 is a farming game which at £25 is, in my opinion, a bit overpriced. If you were paying 10 to 15 pounds, then this is a nice entry level farming experience. I feel that there are way too many DLCs already planned for this game. By the end of the year, in order to get the full experience, you're going to be looking at about 40 to 50 pounds, maybe even more, and there is no way that I would rate this game at such a high price. It seems that DLCs are going to be the cash cow for Pure Farming 2018, and if you're going to invest in it, I suggest you keep your wits about you. So far the price of the DLCs seems pretty reasonable to me, but it wouldn't take long before they start to add up and accumulate. And this game doesn't really have that level of simulation that I feel justifies such a big price tag. Now I'm aware, as most of you are, that modding for this game has been spouted about, but there's no clarity yet, and I'm still trying to find an answer to this question, if it's just going to be vehicles. What we really need, well I say what we really need, what the game really needs is map modding and physics modding and a, an ability to really make changes to the game. 
I don't know if any of that's going to be available, and if it isn't, then it's going to be exactly the same game, no matter how many tractors and cars you throw at it. That's my concern. But until we know the answer to that question, then modding, for me, doesn't really mean that much. I can't imagine that they're going to continue with this modding stance and not include maps, and hopefully they will be able to allow physics and so on and so forth. But who knows? Until I have an answer to that, until we see evidence of it, you got to err on the side of caution. Controls and configuration. Well, guys, wheel support is coming slowly, but in all honesty, this is something that really should have been there from the start. Until this has been implemented, the controls are all geared around the controller or a keyboard and mouse. At present, there are many buttons on the controller that are not even being utilised in favour of some rather convoluted and awkward multi-button press and hold techniques. For example, when driving a tractor, the Y, B and A buttons do nothing at all. And when you're actually moving, the X button doesn't do anything either. They seem to be perfectly placed to control the headlights, the handbrake, maybe the windscreen wipers, maybe even the sat-nav, if that ever happens. Unfortunately, at the moment, there is not any way to rebind keys either, otherwise this would be easily resolved. I do commend the game for including such a decent array of options to configure your character. I would, however, like to see more, and I don't mean by way of DLCs. Instead, I'd like to see women characters, the ability to change facial features, weight and height too. There is a phrase that I could use repeatedly throughout this review. It could be better. It's good, but it could be better. It's almost brilliant, but it's not quite brilliant. Many features in this game are almost excellent, they're just missing the mark ever so slightly, and with a little bit of tweaking, they could be all but perfect. Thankfully, it seems that this game is backed by a very decent development team who deserve some serious praise and support for listening and changing the game based on user feedback. So there is always a chance for a game with such a good development team behind it. Whatever I say from this point in the review, just remember that. Let's discuss the vehicles, shall we? You won't find realistic physics here. That also means there's no ability to switch between two and four wheel drive. But I have to say the vehicle suspension animation is likely among the best that I have ever seen. So good, in fact, that it actually convinced me the physics were very good, but they are not. Not even close to being good. In some vehicles, you would be forgiven for comparing your ride experience to that of a boat. However, the development team are constantly listening, engaging and updating based on user feedback. So it is highly possible that physics can and will become more realistic over time. The external modelling on vehicles is certainly adequate, mud spatters do appear and can be washed away, although it only requires you to aim anywhere, anywhere at all on the vehicle and all the mud will be removed. I do also feel that vehicles get dirty too quickly and uh, that there are not enough stages of dirt available, if that makes sense. Internally, the modelling is much, much the same as you would find in the vanilla Farm Sim 17 or Farm Sim 15 game. There are no clickable buttons inside, but you will get a speedo. I find the glass in vehicles to be completely missing, as in, the, as in there's no reflection. It, it just makes it look as though the glass has been removed. But as we are reviewing as a game and not as a sim, I guess that really doesn't need to be an issue for most of you. For me, the number of vehicles included is not very impressive, but I have to say that the variety is pretty darn good. We probably all know that the game's unique selling point is around worldwide farming cultures and their disciplines. As such, the variety of vehicles available is better than any farming game that's come before it. Vehicles do not have gears, there is no option for manual attachment for equipment and the feeling of weight is not realistic, with a rather erratic steering mechanic in-game as well. This is further perpetuated by the lack of wheel support and hopefully when that comes in things will get a bit better. The mirrors don't work at all and might just as well be removed. This might be something that gets added later but with the in-game stutters already proving to be a bit of an issue, that might just make things worse. Thankfully, there is now an option to have assisted or non-assisted braking. Switching between this option stops your vehicles immediately reversing every time you brake. That's a feature that I desperately wanted to see, and I was most impressed with how quickly that was implemented. 
To be fair, I think it still needs a little tweaking. I'm also glad to say that getting out of your vehicle no longer completely resets everything to the cold and dark stance. That was a major pain, especially when trying to fill your tank with water, but accidentally pressing X and getting out of the vehicle, only having to get back in and turn everything back on again. So glad that they swapped that around. When you're in external camera mode, you will be able to see your character modelled. This works fine, but on a personal note, I feel that the head of the character turns far too far either way uh, and takes way too long to re-centralise again. It's, it's just a personal thing that I wanted to chuck in here, but I find it considerably distracting. Now that you know about it, maybe it'll irritate you as well. Collision detection is another area which irritates me, but that can easily be fixed in time. For example, the fuel consumption was complained about quite a lot, and it's an area where changes have occurred quickly and have, as a result, improved the game. In my first look review, I said that the uh, audio was pretty darn good. I, I'm going to have to take that back, I'm afraid. In-game audio is actually very sparse. Initially, I was impressed with the audio, as I said, because they had very cleverly picked just the right audio to promote. But after a few hours of gameplay, it becomes really evident that it is the same audio, at the same time, in the same way. It doesn't matter what you're doing or where you are. You will also start to notice that in between these audio moments, there are huge gaps where some audio should be present, but nothing actually is. You will not hear any bumps, knocks, squeaks or rattles or chains at any time in this game. It's all way too quiet and way too clean. Graphically, in the daytime, I would argue that the game is above average, although I have experienced many stutters in play and seen massive slowdowns of AI vehicles. Let's be fair, the skybox is poor, as is the weather implementation. Much more could and should be done here. At night, the graphics are less than impressive, with a white line seemingly surrounding everything. This is something that could easily be softened and improved over time. I would say that the headlights are pretty much spot on, actually, a feature which seems to trouble almost all games of late, so a big fat thumbs up from me on that point. There's this flock of birds on the USA map. Um, it's off they're often seen flying around and they look terrible. It's more like uh, a PNG image is being dragged around in a circle. In addition to this, uh, I find the trees, which are animated, appear to be permanently starring in their very own Twister sequel. I've seen this before in other games and it just looks terrible. I think that static trees might actually look more realistic than these things. The UI is crisp and it's clean, although I find that data is a little bit convoluted and the map could seriously benefit from a considerably more definitive key system. Finding anything on the map is a bit too much of a chore for me, but with such a good development team listening to feedback, this should unquestionably be an area where I would expect to see dramatic improvements soon. The map operates with a pretty constant on-screen representation of objectives and important locations. This became a bit annoying for me, to be honest, and I would have liked the ability to turn not the entire HUD off, but uh, be able to control the HUD, certainly. At best, it often confused things by not always highlighting where I wanted to go, and also seemed to continue highlighting challenges that I'd already completed. The end result was just a slightly messy and frustrating UI experience. Given time, like any UI, you will adapt and overcome, but the very fact that this is necessary shows that it actually does need adjusting. Another area which would benefit from adjustment is the minimap. It's not that it's too small or that it's too zoomed in, but when you're driving faster, you kind of need it to auto zoom out a bit so you can see where you're going. You can manually zoom it out, but again, it's a convoluted multi-key press issue it could be improved, the situation there. Like I say, if you start accelerating and the map just automatically zoomed out a little bit, I think that would fix that problem 100%. The external camera has been improved, as has the field of view. These are both very positive changes brought about from the developers listening to the community. And it is quite honestly the best aspect of this game for me, in the sense that if they continue to listen and improve, who knows where this game could end up? I guess it will all come down to how open and accessible the modding tools are at the end of the day.
Now, all facilities on the farm incorporate a menu. That's field, plantations, cows, everything. Everything has a slider style percentage system. Obviously, 100% being full of water, for example. There are still times, though, where this information does not pop up at the right time, causing you to try and continue filling even when something is full. This is an irritation, but an, a better system could easily be implemented. Let's say, for example, where a button press can activate it rather than this unreliable trigger mechanism. There is now an option to turn off the UI completely, but this is not quite what I'd like to see. Better implementation and customization of what you want to see on screen and when is needed. And perhaps a quick switch button for the controller might help here. Again, when button binding is introduced, a lot of these types of problems can probably be fixed by the user. The textures and the modeling seems okay, even pretty good at first, but when you have spent a little bit of time with it, the textures do start to look a bit superimposed, blocky, and not very nice. Distant objects also behave very poorly. They kind of blur and the stuff that's closer to you appears to be superimposed as well. This is even more evident at night and it's just, uh, it's, um, it's a problem for me because it, it makes me realize that I'm in a game and it's, it's another one of those disconnect moments. There are three game modes available in Pure Farm in 2018. The first of which serves as a tutorial and provides a very detailed, very capable and extremely in-depth tutorial, which is perfectly suitable for all beginners and children, but way less so for those just looking for a refresher or to learn the new key commands. Then you have the challenges mode. This again is unique in farming games and I commend Ice Flames and Techland for being original here. It's a great idea and should they open that up to the community, enabling them to create their own scenarios and challenges, then this could become the USP of the game. Sadly, as it is, the challenges are too easy and <clears throat> quite often lack helpful information. This lack of information is likely the only reason you would ever fail the challenge, I think. I, th I think it's highly unlikely that you would ever fail the same challenge more than twice, certainly not three times in a row. And I also feel that playing a challenge more than twice is, is pretty unlikely. It's, the, it's really quite monotonous, and the, the monotony is further exacerbated by the disconnected feeling that this game currently offers. Therefore, this potentially great feature is likely to end up being a bit redundant unless they open it up to the community or and or get some better challenges in there. Finally, the main free play game mode. This mode allows you to pick your starting financial balance and has been updated since release day to five million pounds or dollars or whatever you're playing in instead of uh, on release day, which I think was 250,000. I've heard many people complain about the level of di difficulty associated with trying to turn a profit in this game. Personally, I think it's fine, but then this is probably where the hardcore simulation fans differ wildly from the normal population. For example, it's the ability to overcome the challenge and succeed despite the immense difficulty which gives me satisfaction. Perhaps more should be done to allow each player to choose between the easiest and the hardest settings. That would be good. Maybe even a beginner, me medium and hardcore mode within the game would, would benefit everybody. The option to farm in the USA, Japan, Italy or Colombia are great. But with exception for the main map, these maps are really rather small. Map modding could alleviate this issue. Otherwise, you are just going to start to feel restricted sooner rather than later. In addition to the small map issue, everything that you can buy and expand on is already preordained. You cannot pick what you want to build or where you want to put it. This just makes for a very repetitive gameplay and reduces the impact of farming abroad. Incidentally, you cannot enter most of the buildings either. The lack of placeables will ultimately make every farming experience exactly the same as the last one, every single time, and nobody wants a carbon copy of their last game. If this aspect of the game does not change, and it's a big ask, then ultimately it will restrict individuality as well as the opportunity to specialise in certain areas of farming. The same can be said for the irrigation systems. I would really, as much as I like them, I would really like to be more hands-on, build them, have issues with them, fix them, repair them, maintenance. But, you know, that's, that's me, that's what I'm looking for. 
The game also has a number of minor but annoying bugs like uh, barn numbers for example. They kind of get all muddled up and in turn that confuses and frustrates players. I was surprised and impressed to see locusts in the game. The locust attack challenge was, uh, I was jokingly going to say, oh I wonder if they have a, a swarm of locusts coming in and they flipping well did. It might not be the most amazingly animated locust you've ever seen and it, it gets in the cab with you, uh, probably due to the lack of windows, but I was genuinely, genuinely hand on heart, I was impressed to see locusts in that challenge. So fair play, I've not seen that before and that was a good feature. Water is another area that does annoy me though. Okay, sure, deep water should damage and perhaps even destroy your tractors. But if I can walk through it okay, then I think I should be able to drive a flipping tractor through it too. Another little bug here requires that you recover your trailer before the tractor. If you do it the other way round, then your trailer will occasionally not be recoverable. And you won't be able to get it out in any way at all because in order to hitch onto the front of it, you're going to have to drive into the water and you're going to be back into the same situation again. Certainly one of the almost perfect areas in this game is the drone, especially when you utilise the augmented reality overlay to check on the state of your crops. Perfection would include the ability to just move the camera up a bit and see where you're going. Otherwise, that is brilliant. And I really, really do mean it. That, that whole drone and augmented reality system is just superb. I absolutely... It's not needed, it's not necessary, but my God, it's good. I do like that. I really, really genuinely do like that. Another bugbear, though, that has to change is the lack of the ability to jump. Your character cannot jump. It's ridiculous. Most of the time, I suppose this is an unrequired ability. But let's say, for example, you're trying to navigate to something that is 10 yards in front of you. But the only thing in your way is a wall that's less than a foot high. Now, the game forces you to run an additional 500 yards in order to get round that wall and that gets frustrating really quickly. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to touch lightly on realism because I am trying to review this game as an arcade game, as a, as a fun game rather than a simulator. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip over this as quickly as I feel I can. Uh, the level of this realism in game, the level of realism in this game is small. I mean the game is heavily dictated by numbers, way too heavily. Now whilst all farming games are to an extent dictated by numbers, here the numbers are far too pronounced and they really, really do start to detract from the feeling of actually farming. It's more like you're playing a numbers game than farming. There is not enough margin or inclusion for error in my opinion. Now for the casual or younger gamers this might actually be a positive thing. So if that describes you, you can pretty much ignore this entire section. I want, I want to discuss uh, the furrows in the game because only just before release did the dev team include furrows into the game. Prior to that there was absolutely no indication on the ground that you had processed the work at all. So whilst we all thought that the visual indicators on the minimap were added to assist us with that, actually it's the opposite way round. The ground alteration came last. And this is a direct example of the lack of realism that this game actually intended to include. That doesn't mean it's never going to do it, but certainly they're starting at the other end of the spectrum. Thankfully for both them and us, this works well and it looks good. However, the modelling has absolutely no impact on the feel or the handling of the vehicles as they drive over. This is primarily due to the very unrealistic physics and could be changed further down the line, but I suspect that that will only happen if the community really pushes for it. Now I do like the fact that vehicles get damaged which affects their speed and their handling. These vehicles need to be repaired and that will cost you money. Without doubt this is one of the better features for me but I do feel that a difficulty level in game might make this even better. For example driving my car headlong into the river then recovering it and repairing it did not in my humble opinion cost enough or cause enough damage to the car in the first place. I'd like to see uh, difficulty levels introduced into this game. Reverting back to the vehicles just for a moment, due to the lack of real physics, you will also encounter a number of dumbed down countermeasures. For example, turning 
will reduce your speed. Having equipment on the back will reduce your speed, as it should. But depending on what functionality you're currently utilising, that will in turn modify your speed even further. Going off-road also reduces your speed, all of which is pretty much unnecessary and wholly unrealistic. What needs to happen here is the physics get improved and the damage system is advanced so that driving erratically will have consequences, reduce efficiency and even damage equipment. At release, it wasn't possible to drill grass seed, so you were restricted to mowing wild grass. This is something that has to change, and I have no doubt that it will change. Additionally, crop destruction, this, this for me is just a basic thing that should be included in every farming game, regardless of realism. That needs to come in, both of those things need to come in pretty sharpish, I'd say. Animal husbandry, I think, is another area that needs a lot more modification. It needs to be more hands-on, and there needs to be a great deal more realism introduced. For example, the cows don't need water, and the, the tiny pen in which they are forced to live is just silly. And it reverts back to my dislike of the lack of placeable uh, items in game. You can't build your own farm, it's already there, it's dictated to you, and that's a, that's a massive turn-off for me, I've got to say. It's been mostly negative, despite me trying to be positive about this game. But it's, it's because these are the th this is what I see when I look at it. My first look review might have had less than two hours in game, but I was absolutely spot on with that review. It's not a simulator, it's missing the physics, it's missing this, it's missing that. It's all true, but now I've backed it up with proof, I've given you evidence. The best thing about this game, without a doubt, is the development team that's behind it. What, whatever it is that the community decide they want from this game, I'm fairly certain that the dev team will eventually get it going. Just so long as the lines of communication remain strong and open between the community and the dev team. Now, I'm not the only person giving feedback to the devs, but I do feel like I've instigated a lot of change in this game already. Got a lot of conversation going around this game. And that's good. That's great. I'm really glad that I managed to do that. But this is going to be my last video on this game for a long time, maybe ever. So it's going to be up to you guys now to make this game what it is. I'm not going to be here to shout out my complaints anymore. You need to shout yours out and make your suggestions and push it on the devs and talk to them and keep it going. As for the hardcore sim fans like me, I'm afraid uh, even when the key binding and the wheel support comes in, there is so much more that would need to change in order for me to bring this game up to a level where I could fully feel engaged and really enjoy it. That's not to say it isn't a good game. It is a good game, it's just not the game that I was expecting or indeed hoping it would be. I know a number of people who are in no way simulation fans, but they have picked up a copy of uh, Farm Sim 17. Now, they tend not to play it because they don't know what they're doing, and truth be told, they're not really willing to go and do the research and learn the intricacies of real farming. So therein lies one of the most profound and undeniable differences between a hardcore sim fan and, for want of a better word, a gamer. The hardcore sim fan will either have previous real life experience or will be happy to research and learn and expand their knowledge and understanding in order to play the game. We actually enjoy that part of the game, but gamers, they don't want to do that. They just want to be able to pick it up and play. And I totally get that. I totally understand that. That's how I used to be. But I'm not like that now. I, I need the challenge. I need the difficulty. I need the, I need the, the information. So I, I need to learn something new. So, for the gamers out there, I'm pretty sure you'll like this game considerably more than Farm Sim 17. However, I do suspect that in time you might wish to make the transition back over here to where the hardcore simulation fans are. And when that day comes, SimUK will still be here with all the tutorials, advice and gameplay videos that you will need to help get you started on something wholly more realistic. The modding options and the capabilities will ultimately restrict or set free this game, I think. And I know for a fact that if the modding community do get behind this game and really take a hold of it, then it's only going to become more realistic and less arcade. This is primarily because the vast majority of modders are more likely to be hardcore sim fans than they are to be arcade players. I do have concern around what will be available in the modding community. I have seen evidence, obviously, of vehicle modding, and indeed there is a modded John Deere available that I've put up in another video. 
But I must point out that the mechanism to import these mods is very clunky at the moment, an overly time-consuming process. In comparison to other farming sims who shall remain nameless, it's much easier to do it in, in their game, and even that isn't particularly good, to be honest. So maybe a new system needs to come out there, and I'm sure this is the dev team that can really come up with a great idea. If there are maps and physics made available to the modders, then who knows what magic they can perform. Until such times, all I can say is, enjoy your gaming time regardless of your chosen tool. Thank you so much for listening, so much for communicating and talking. It's been brilliant. Have fun. Take care. Goodbye for now.